Okay, I'm recording that. So this is Brother Peter Diamond here with Greg Thomas Rossi, and we were going to be discussing issues concerning the Catholic Church and the Vatican II Church. And so I guess I would just begin by saying that you don't think that Benedict XVI is a heretic. Um, he said some ambiguous things in the past. And maybe, like, very early in his career, he had some unorthodox beliefs, but um, I believe he's solidly Catholic at the moment, and I don't think we can judge him as a heretic right now. Okay, yeah, if you could speak up pretty loud, that would be better, because then you'd come through even louder. But, oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's that okay. Yeah. Uh, you were okay, but, yeah, that's even better, probably. So you don't okay. think that he denies Vatican Council I, because Vatican I teaches that all members of the Church of Christ must accept the papal primacy and must also hold that this is a binding matter of faith. Do you think that he actually believes that? Um, I think he does. I think he would he would state the doctrine in a little bit terms than they did in the in the 1800s. But I think he believes in in, um, in the substance of that decree. I mean, it says it in the Catechism. But so. he he regards as members of the Church the leaders of schismatic sects who reject the papacy. For instance, he's signed and professed common declarations with the leaders of non-Catholic sects who reject the papal primacy, and he's called them pastors in the Church of Christ. That means yes, that... Yes, but he's... I'm that, sorry. That's a denial of Vatican I. Well, he's qualified his statements by saying that they're not fully in the Church of Christ. Like the Eastern Orthodox, they have valid orders, so, um, so they are priests of God in a sense. And if they're in... If they don't know the truth then they still can be passing on graces to those in their churches through the valid sacraments. And so he would say that in those churches there are elements of Catholicism because they have the actual um, sacraments passed down from the apostles. And so his definition of the Church of Christ is, um, like in the older way, they would say the Church of Christ is the Catholic Church, and then outside of the visible Catholic Church, there are some elements of Catholicism. He would just say, well, it's all Catholicism, but it seems like it's the same principle to me. He well, no. He, fully Catholics, and then there's... No, he holds, have, he holds that people who do not accept the Catholic faith, who reject the papal office, are members of the Church, are inside the Church, and that is heresy. He holds that they're pastors, that they actually hold a position in the Church. Dominus Jesus says that the schismatic churches are true particular churches. Okay, John Paul II in his encyclical on ecumenism declares that non-Catholic and Protestant churches are in communion with himself and, quote, the Catholic Church probably 16 times. And so there's no doubt about it. For instance, I'll just cite his common declaration with schismatic Orthodox Bishop Chrysostomos, June 16, 2007, they're professing together, quote, We are sure are faithful of our fervent prayers as pastors in the church. Okay, so he's regarding a non-Catholic bishop who rejects papal infallibility, Vatican I, papal primacy, not to mention other dogmas concerning probably and perhaps Our Lady, other issues which a Catholic must accept the Catholic teaching on, he says they're pastors in the church. That's a total denial of the Catholic faith. That's formal heresy. There's no well, way around that. Well, I think there is, because, like, a Protestant who's baptized, I mean, in a sense, they are part of the church. They have a valid sacrament, and if they haven't fallen into sin afterwards, they are in a state of sanctifying grace. And those, though, in their minds, they're not, they don't know the truth. As long as they're open to the truth and they haven't baptized, they would still have sanctifying grace. And that would definitely apply to the Eastern Orthodox if they're receiving the sacraments in confession and that they're getting that sanctifying grace. But the, the Pope and um, Cardinal Ratzinger, and then the later Benedict, have clearly said there's full communion and then there's partial communion in the Church. 
And I don't know if those specific words were used very often before Vatican II, but I think the general principles were there. Well, there are a couple things you said. First of all, what you stated about the Orthodox being in the state of grace and in the Church is blatantly heretical and has been condemned by the Church. It's a dogma of the faith that those who deny the teaching of the Church are outside the Church. One ceases to be a member of the Church through heresy or schism. Heresy is a denial of an article of divine and Catholic faith in official teaching of the Church. That's why Pope Leo XIII, who wrote a whole encyclical on the unity of the Church in 1896, Satis Cognitum, and he goes through what the Church teaches on these issues, heretics, whether they're in or out of the Church, communion, what does the Church teach on the unity of communion, unity of faith. Okay, if any honest person were to read that encyclical, one could see that it's directly the opposite of the Vatican of Vatican II's false ecclesiology and that which has been taught by the Vatican II anti-popes. And I'll just quote one paragraph. Leo XIII, status cognitum number nine, the practice of the Church has always been the same as is shown by the unanimous teaching of the Fathers who were wont to hold as outside Catholic communion and alien to the Church whoever would recede in the least degree from any point of doctrine proposed by her authoritative magisterium. And so for you to say that the Eastern, quote, Orthodox, even though they reject the papacy, the principle of unity, are in the church, that's just blatantly heretical, Greg. Okay, well, I think you have to make a distinction between a material heretic and a formal heretic. Um, I think it's quite clear that they were talking about formal heretics in those decrees. There's no such thing was, as a material I think heretic. That was under, I think that was understood at the time, that they were... They were talking about people who were choosing to reject the church. But they weren't saying people who might be in good faith. I mean, like, okay, the Eastern Orthodox was baptized when he was a child, and then he was raised in that church, and he always tried to follow what was good. At what point would he lose sanctifying grace? Okay, well, you said a number of different things. Let me respond to them. First of all, it is referring to formal heretics, of course, because... A, a heretic is a formal heretic. There's no such thing as a material heretic. It's a, it's a name that's given to a Catholic who is erring in good faith. Okay? A material heretic does not deliberately reject any teaching of the Church. The people we're talking about, the so-called Orthodox, and in particular, the so-called Orthodox with whom he is declaring a communion of faith and he's signing and making professions of common declarations that we are, quote, pastors in the Church of Christ... These people are fully aware of Catholic teaching on the papal office. So the assertion that we must consider some issue of ignorance here is ridiculous and irrelevant. We're not talking about anyone who is unaware of a Catholic teaching. We're talking about people who, they're friends with Benedict XVI. They're fully aware of all of these issues. They reject it, and your sect teaches that they are in the church. To answer your question, when does a person baptized by heretics become a heretic himself? When he understands the issue and rejects it. And so that's when a person, whether you're baptized by a traditional Catholic, whether you're baptized by a Protestant, whatever it is, you are made a member of the church as an infant. However, as soon as you embrace heresy, you lose the faith and you lose membership of the church. That's why Pius XII says in Mystici Corporis that not every sin causes one to lose membership in the Church, but the sins of heresy, schism, and apostasy do. And so we're talking about people who reject the papacy, Greg. Okay? And so what you've said has no relevance at all. 